This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, this is Lydia Cornell. I played Sarah Rush on Too Close for Comfort. And you're listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the Past. Tell them some jokes, Tommy. Love you. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past. The only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. I cannot tell you how excited I am for today's guest, and I'm trembling a little bit. I will be talking to Tracy Wells, who played Heather Owens on Mr. Belvedere, the classic sitcom that ran from 1985 to 1990. Yes, oh my god, I can't wait. I always thought she was adorable and hilariously funny on that show. It was such a big staple of my childhood. And Tracy was also in uh, Gremlins. She played one of Corey Feldman's um, classmates um, in the movie, you know, just in time for Christmas. And she was also in the classic horror anthology movie After Midnight, Mirror, Mirror 2, and some other things. And it's going to be a great conversation today. I just can't wait. Tracy sells real estate now. And... We're going to get into that as well. You know, a lot of actors I talk to go into real estate. It's just so amazing, you know. Um, Yeah, it's called, you know, Tofty Realty, I believe, is uh, the name of her real estate company. And I I just can't tell you what an honor this is going to be. You know, this episode is being recorded on Sunday, December 3rd, and I'm dropping it at midnight on Sunday, December 24th. Christmas Eve! This is a very special holiday episode of Splat from the Past, so I hope you all enjoy it. So yeah, here is my interview with Tracy Wells, Tofty. Hey, Tracy, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I cannot tell you how thrilled I am. As as a Lashkey kid who watched Prime Time back in the day, this is such a great honor. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Of course, no problem. Yeah, so, going back in time, I know that uh, your mom was an actress. She was in the TV movie remake of The Bad Seed and so forth. Did she instill in you a love for acting? Actually, it wasn't my mom. It was my sister. Uh-huh. My mom was never an actress. It was my sister that was on In the Bad Seed. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. So, um, did you start with school plays and community theater and all of that? Um, what I started, how I got into the business was through dance. Sing. I did a lot of dancing when I was a little kid, and then um, there was an audition for the Tim Conway show for the dancers on that show, mm. and I auditioned for it, and I got one of the um, one of the dancer slots. But at the same time, my dance teacher said, "You know, you should." You said to my mom, "You should really get Tracy an agent." So I got an agent and I went on commercial auditions and my agent at the time said, you know what, let's not do the dancing route. Let's do on camera stuff where you're like acting and it pays better and won't tie you up so much. Because with the dancing, I would have just been dancing along with a bunch of other dancers. And as much as that would have been fun, it really wasn't the path that I wanted to take. So um, that's how I got started. So really had a lot to do with my dance teacher. Nice, nice. Are you trained in all types of dancing? Yeah, I did uh, tap, jazz, and ballet, but that was like back in the day. Like now, no, (laughs) but back then, yes. Yeah. (laughs) For sure, for sure. So is there anything you remember from that Tim Conway experience? Um, Well, just the audition and getting it, I didn't actually go forward with the job and do the job. Right. Um, but I just remember it re- being like a really big honor that I got to get cast in it because I remember watching the show and, you know, the dancers were amazing and fantastic and very well trained. And I thought, wow, like to learn a dance Ooh. routine every single week, you know, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But um, yeah, I mean, it didn't end up working out, but I ended up doing other roles that had dancing like Pennies from Heaven and yes. the movie Annie, where I did 
just dancing, not really acting. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I love Pennies from Heaven. It's such a great dark musical. What, what do you remember from being on that set? Um, I remember from being on that set just how amazing the cast was and the production value alone. I mean, these sets were massive, like huge sound stages of these amazing sets. And, it, you know, it was a time piece. So the time period, like all of our costumes and the makeup and our hair and everything had to fit that time period. And the costumes that we wore were designed by Bob Mackey, the famous oh, yeah. wardrobe designer that does stuff for like share and stuff like that. And he had, he was a super nice guy and he had an assistant that was a rather large man, super mm-hmm. nice guy. And Bob Mackey used to threaten us that if we get any dirt or anything on our costumes, that his assistant would sit on us. I mean, he was saying it in like fun. It wasn't like that shaming or anything like that he was just trying to say in a nice way to mm-hmm. all of us kids like please be careful don't get chocolate syrup on your white costumes like be yeah. really conscious of what you're doing um but it was great i mean we rehearsed for weeks mm-hmm. and our choreographer was danny daniels who is like really famous choreographer and we had to learn all these tap dance routines and all this stuff and the scene that we did was on top of a baby grand piano. Yeah. So we had to do our routine on top of the actual baby grand piano, which I'm a little afraid of heights, but you had to get over it. Like, yeah. put your big girl panties on and figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so it was fun. Yeah. Did you interact fun. with Steve Martin or anybody on the set? The only the only scenes that we had were with Bernadette Peters. Mm-hmm. Um, and she played our school teacher. We were in the classroom. Um, and she was our school teacher and we had to react a little bit to that. And she also was in the dance sequence with us, but she was super sweet, super yeah, sweet lady. I've heard she's super yeah. sweet. And of yeah. course, uh, Herbert Ross directed, I heard he could be tough though. He had very high standards because he came from Broadway, you know? Yeah, he was, he was great. I mean, it was an honor to work with all of these people and, you know, there were like probably like 20 kids we were all the same age so we definitely had wranglers to like keep us quiet and keep us all together and keep us on our toes and all of that stuff but it was a lot of fun I mean I still remember the dance routine it was like ingrained into our head so yeah (laughs) it was cool and one of the dancers in there was Tanya Fenmore yep Tanya Fenmore her mom and my mom were best friends like they would gossip on the phone for hours and um it was my mom passed away from cancer when i was 15 years old Mm -hmm. and even till the end they were really close uh tanya's mom and my mom oh that's awesome yeah then came annie i've talked to uh roseanne serentino who played pepper a few times Uh, Mm um what was uh, john houston like to work with he was great, super nice guy. Um, I remember they fired the choreographer halfway through production, mm-hmm. so that was a little interesting. Um, I remember it not being as friendly as a, friendly of a set as Pennies from Heaven because I don't know if it was our ages, because we were a little bit older. <laughs> it was our ages or it was just the moms, but there was just a lot of, like, cattiness and competitiveness and yeah. stuff like that while i was on annie it went over production it went a lot longer than it was supposed to and i was cast in a kellogg's um banana frosted flakes commercial yeah and my my agent said to my mom you need to tell them that you're sick you're sick that day you're not going to be able to come in so you can go and do this commercial because enough is enough. You've been on the Annie set long enough. Like, Because she kind of didn't like me doing these. Even though she was getting money, it was like I was tied up for weeks on end being like a dancer versus going on auditions. So when I got cast on this commercial, um, she wanted my mom to say that I was sick and don't come in that day and uh, so I could film this commercial. 
And my mom was a little bit of a gossiper, and I think she told someone what was really going on. And when I came back um, after filming the commercial, they let me go. So I didn't finish production because they found out that I basically, like, lied and went and filmed a commercial. So you live and you learn. But all the other dancers went on to become well-known actresses. Uh, Meredith Salinger, Amanda Peterson, Tina Caspery, uh, yep. Sh- uh, Shawnee Smith, uh, Angela Lee Sloan, who yep. I've talked to. Yeah. <laughs> yep, a lot of great people were on that set. And so, yeah, it was a great experience. The audition was brutal. I remember the audition. They... Um, we had to learn this routine too. It's a hard knock life. Yeah. And they just like pulled us out like five at a time to do the routine. And then they just kept letting people go, letting people go until at the very end, whoever was left, that's who was cast. And it was, it was really interesting because of course we're all minors. So all of our parents, you know, our moms were there, all the stage moms. And it was just like everyone just like breathing down your neck. It was super competitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it was the best little horror house in Texas you worked on? I did. I had, like, one line, and (laughs) it didn't make it to the end of the movie. Um, I remember we went to the rap party, and, like, none of the big stars were there. Like, Dolly Parton, Burt Reynolds, they weren't there. But I went to the rap party with my dad, and that was a lot of fun. It was, like, a really big shindig. And then I went to the movie premiere with my mom, and um, I was, like, fully expecting to see my face up there with my one line, and it got cut. And they don't tell you that. You know, you don't have, like, any warning. Like, hey, just so you know, you're coming out to your movie premiere. You're going to be all excited, but you were cut. You find out while you're there mm-hmm. <laughs> that your part was cut, and it's a little, like, heartbreaking. Um, but I still had a great time being on set and everything. Yeah, in, in 1981, my parents got married, and they took my older brother, who was seven, to Disneyland, and then they went on a tour of Universal Studios, and they got to see uh, Bert and Dolly watch uh, film a scene from the movie. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, I wasn't born yet. I was born two years later, but I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, and, uh, you did absolutely. A, you did a Pepsi commercial with Michael Jackson. That must have been both exciting and intimidating. It was um, actually a dream come true. I was a huge Michael Jackson fan, like obsessed. Mm -hmm. My bedroom walls were plastered with his face. Um, For my birthday that year, all I wanted to do was um, go to Benihana's, which is a restaurant in Encino, Mm -hmm. and then park, have my dad park in front of his house so we could just sit there for an hour to see if he like drove out of the gate like that's what I wanted for my birthday and and that's what we did and I when I got the audition it was on a Saturday um I went out to the audition and I was like not gonna leave anything to chance like I was going to book that commercial like I didn't care what they asked me to do, how many times they asked me to do it, I was going to nail it. It was my destiny to work with Michael Jackson. I was like headstrong, like I have to make, I have to get this job. Yeah. And at the audition, there were so many kids there, like ridiculous <laughs> amounts of kids there. And the audition consisted of them playing uh, Michael Jackson music mm-hmm. and you dancing to his music on camera. That was pretty much the audition. And I probably looked like a total ass, but I was like, I'm going to make sure that I got that job. (laughs) And by the time my dad drove me home from Hollywood to Woodland Hills, Mm -hmm. or maybe it was my mom that took me. I think it was actually my mom that took me. By the time we drove home from Hollywood to Woodland Hills, which is probably about 45 minutes with no traffic, Mm -hmm. Which you can't even do that these days because there's so much more traffic than there used to be. Oh yeah. By the time we got home, my I, my dad answered the door and said, "You booked the commercial with Michael Jackson." Like I knew by the time I got home, I did that good of a job at the audition, and I was just in tears, so excited, and that was such a great experience, like amazing experience for a kid that is obsessed with Michael Jackson. Yeah, and this was pre-fire, right? 
this was pre-fire. They filmed that commercial, I want to say, like a week or two after us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we did the one with Alfonso Ribeiro first. Okay. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. What What other products did you endorse when you did commercials? Um, let's see. Oh, my gosh. I did Rice Krispies, Weiler's Punch, Always Maxi Pads, um, <laughs> Soup Starter, Hamburger Helper, Wendy's, McDonald's. I did a few McDonald's commercials. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! My first year in the business, I booked seventeen national commercials. Wow! Like I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know what it was about my. I had like this fearlessness and personality on camera. Like I just didn't think about it. You know, I wasn't self conscious. I was like mm. a little kid. And, yeah. So, yeah, I went on an audition once for. Um, Oh, what was it? Like Manwich, you know what Manwich yeah. is? Like oh, that the, sloppy, the sloppy Joe. Joe's. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember like thinking like I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Like I don't like the smell of it. I don't like I don't like sloppy joes. I remember they served sloppy joes at school yeah. in the cafeteria and it was like so yucky and gross. And I remember at the audition we had to take a bite. And I know I made a face, and then they offered, they had a spit bucket, and nobody else spit it out except me. They brought, like, three or four of us in at a time, and I was the only one that spit it out. And I knew, like, the moment I, like, I I was so weak, and, like, I was like, I can't swallow this. I'm spitting it out. I wasn't going to get a call back. Um, and then I told my mom when we got in the car, and she was really mad. She was upset at me because, like, you know, it's a schlep from Willen Hills out to Hollywood, for an audition and like you know my mom's like you're an actress you could have pretended i'm like you haven't tasted it it's terrible <laughs> so yeah that's how that one went yeah so was it a standard audition for gremlins uh yeah it was a standard audition for gremlins i went in and i read um for the casting director and then she brought me back I want to say the next day and then I read for her and the director and then I was on set the next day yeah you play one of Corey Feldman's classmates right yes yeah yep what was he like oh he was great he's super nice guy and I was friends with his sister Mindy for some time um Mm. really nice really nice family great people yeah, never had a bad experience or anything, and it was a lot of fun on that set. Um, they used a lot of, um, like, movie smoke to make everything look kind of, I don't know what the word is, but, like, misty and and oh, the yeah. smoke. I just remember that misty smoke that they use just smells awful, and it gets, like, all over your clothes and stuff. Yeah. So when I think of Gremlins, I think about the smell of that smoke, which is really weird. But, yeah, that, that was my experience on Gremlins. I only worked a few days on Gremlins. It wasn't long at all. Yeah, you guys were watching this short educational film that Frank Capra made in the 50s about, you know, the rabbit heart and health and all of that. Yes. And uh, it was summer pretending to be winter. Uh, it was shot at the Universal back lot during the same time Streets of Fire was being filmed. And Yep. Yeah. Were you, were you, uh, didn't you have, like, lines that were cut? Yep, there too. Uh-huh. Same thing. I had lines. Um, I mean, that's why I went on audition because I had lines. They wanted to see how I read the lines. I got the part, went to the movie premiere that I was invited to and found out during the premiere that my lines were cut. Yeah. Good yeah. times. Yeah, I interviewed <laughs> this actress, Lois, Lo- Lois Foraker. She played one of Billy Peltzer's um, uh, bank teller friends. And you see her at, at the beginning um, in her in her bank booth, but she had a scene where they where they talked and it was cut too. So, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I've seen a lot of the cut scenes on the DVD, but uh, not the ones with uh, you being cut or her being cut, oddly enough. Yeah. Were you, were you terrified the first time you saw the movie? Um, I wouldn't say that I was terrified. I'm scary movies are not really my thing. I'm mm-hmm. even though it's not like a super scary movie. I guess it didn't really bother me because like I had seen all the animatronics when I was on set and kind of like knew what to expect, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was 3 when it hit HBO in the summer of 83. That and Ghostbusters 
uh, both hit in the summer of 83, and they both made me laugh and terrified me at the same time. <laughs> and I was watching Night of the Comet during that time as well, and that didn't scare me. And But um, Gremlins and Ghostbusters, there's moments in there that still scare me to this day. <laughs> Absolutely. There's definitely scary bits to it, for sure. For sure. How was um, guest starring on Silver Spoons? Um, guest starring on Silver Spoons was great. I had a huge crush on Ricky Schroeder, like most girls at that age. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the audition very well. Um, you know, it was like on the Universal lot, and... I loved going to the Universal lot. There's something very magical about auditioning on that lot. It just felt like really cool, like something to aspire to, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I read for the casting director and the producers. I think it was kind of like later on when they were looking for this part mm -hmm. that when they brought me in, they were already on callback. So I was already reading to a room full of people. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I remember doing my read. I did a really good job. And as I was leaving the bungalow, uh, the producer stuck his head out of the window and asked me after my read what I thought of Ricky Schroeder. And I just remember saying something really goofy and stupid. And I got all flushed and red and giggly. <laughs> and he just thought that was great. And then, uh, yeah, I got the part. And then that filmed right next to Who's the Boss? So uh, the week that I was there, we filmed Silver Spoons, and it was right next to Who's the Boss, and that was a lot of fun. It was mm. it was a good time. So was uh, Mr. Belvedere a standard audition for you? Uh, not, well, how do I explain that? I wouldn't say it was a standard audition, because I auditioned for Cody Yule, the casting director, mm. and then um, after I was done with that audition... My very next audition was reading at Network, uh -huh. which is a really scary experience because it's a it's basically a room where you can't see anybody. They can only see you. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, bleacher seats, but there's a spotlight on you on the stage. So you can't really see who's in the audience, but you could tell it was like a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. That was a little intimidating. I read with uh, Chris Hewitt, who played Belvedere. Yeah. And... Um, I think that's all I read with, just him. But I just remember there were a ton of girls there, and there were a lot of um, women actresses auditioning for the role of Marsha, the mom. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing a lot of people there, like Patricia Heaton was there. Wow. And, oh my gosh, I can't remember the actress's name, but she played the mom on Home Improvement. She was there. Patricia Richardson. Lot, yes, Patricia Richardson. There was a lot of great people there auditioning. It was very, 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 very intimidating. It was at, um, it was in Century City um, on Avenue of the Stars, and it was like these big ABC Tower uh -huh. buildings, and that's where the, uh, that's where the network reads were. Yeah, were you familiar with the original movies? Um, I knew it was a remake from the original movies, but I had not seen them. I haven't seen them even to this day. So I knew about it, but I never saw them. I saw a little bit of one when I was like nine, and my parents explained to me that it was it was um, that the series was based on the the movies. But other than that, yeah, uh -huh. I, I still haven't seen them. They're very underrated movies, obviously. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen. Them. I believe that every iconic sitcom begins a certain way and then it evolves into another way. And it seems like when Mr. Belvedere started out, it was you know it was, a, it was about a British butler who traveled around the world and he settles in what Ohio it was, right? Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, and he he doesn't see eye to eye with the patriarch of the family and the children. Yet the mother likes him. But as it evolved, you know, the show became more about the kids going through stuff at, at school. It seemed like. Yeah, I mean, there were definitely a lot of episodes about the kids, but there were also episodes about the mom, like she was taking like, like energy pills to get her yeah. to pass her bar exam. And then there were like, you know, a lot of stuff between Belvedere and George Owens, who was played by Bob Eucher. Mm -hmm. So there, 
it was a lot of stuff about Wesley, the younger uh, Bryce Beckham. Uh-huh. There was a lot of stuff, you know, between him and Belvedere. But yeah, I mean, I feel like they kind of spread it around between all of us pretty well in yeah. terms of the A, a storyline and the B storyline. All, all my favorite episodes revolve around Heather and then the ones with Kevin because they had you guys do some hilarious stuff and you got to show your dramatic chops as well. Sometimes, yeah. 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 And uh, I've talked to Michelle Matheson. I had her on five years ago. And I, I, she is so funny. I just I adore her. You know, she told oh, she's me. She's great. Yeah, she told me the episode where Angela has a crush on Kevin got her some hate mail because her nightgown, like, could see through, you could see her underwear, and it offended a lot of people, she said. Oh my god, that's so silly. And nowadays, there's like, nowadays, it's like, lord, there's like, put some clothes on. Yeah, it's so different now. And and the way that she's always getting his name wrong, Mr. Belly Flop, it's just so great. Yeah, but uh, majority of the episodes were directed by Noam Pitlick. What a name! But what what was Noam Pitlick like? Um, Noam was great. I mean, he's you know was directing for such a long time, so much experience. Um, some hmm. of our favorite episodes and seasons were when Noam was directing. Mm-hmm. Um, he was great. I mean. Ev- to be honest with you, every director we had was fantastic, uh-huh. but we had Gnome the longest, and then we had Don Corvan, right. who took over for Gnome, and they were both fantastic. I mean, they, they knew us all very well. They knew how to bring out the best of all of us, and we all had such a great time on set all the time. We were really, really a close-knit family. Yeah, I mean, it sure shows on screen, you know, how close you all you guys were. And, of course, about a year ago, you guys did that Zoom reunion. I saw it. It was great. Yeah. Thank you. The first season um, was at uh, Sunset Gowers and then moved to ABC Television Center. What, did, did, did 20th Century Fox stop doing their shows on their sound stages? I'm not really sure why we didn't film at 20th Century. That's where my orig- That's where my first audition was. But after my first audition, we never really went back there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we filmed at Sunset Gower to start, but then everything else was at ABC Prospect. And at ABC Prospect, I mean, the only other shows that I really remember there were well, General Hospital films there all, all the time. Um, and then there was a show that didn't last very long that filmed next to us, Sister Kate. And uh-huh. then there was I Married Dora. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then there was like a Dolly Parton special that filmed there. Oh, and yeah. then Flip, Flip Wilson had a special there. So that was it. I mean, we were pretty much like the show that had been there consistently next to General Hospital that had been there forever and still is there. Yeah. When, when I talked to Marta Kristen earlier this year, she told me when they were filming Lost in Space, they were shooting next door at Fox to uh, Batman and Green Hornet. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It's the 60s. Yep. So what are your favorite episodes? Oh, my gosh, so many. Um, I really like the last episode. It was... You know, the last scene of the very last episode was truly like we were all just really heartbroken that this was the last time we were going to be on set together. Mm -hmm. Um, That episode has a really special meaning to me. Um, I love the one. It was a Christmas episode with we are talking about the Christmas present and past and future. Mm -hmm. And they put uh, Mm -hmm. Christopher Hewitt and myself in like they dressed us up as presents like Christmas presents and then we were like floating through the air so they had to like get this whole rig mm-hmm. to like fly us in the air and that was fun because I had never done something like that before Chris was not happy about having to do that um, but it was still fun uh, so I would say those two episodes definitely stand out for me I mean there were so many episodes I got to work with Jason Bateman Oh yeah, which was really cool and um Yeah, I mean, I had my first on-screen kiss on Belvedere, and I had a scene where I had to, like, cry with Belvedere in a scene. That was a really hard scene to do. Mm -hmm. So I have, like, 
very fond memories of like first, you know, milestones that I really cherish. Of, of course. I mean, it was your, it was your life for five years there. Yeah, yeah, I I have many. I mean, I love Kevin and the Amish girl. I, I had Carrie Noonan on yeah. like right at the beginning of of starting the podcast. She's a sweetheart. Uh, Kevin and the nude model, uh, uh, Krista Erickson, who was the bitchy girl in Little Darlings. I had her on a couple of years ago. Oh, that's uh, cool. Uh, Marsha uh, gets hooked on the diet pills, as you said before. There's a moment yeah. in there that kills me, where like you know, uh, you know, it's it's morning time, you know, and her and the Marsha and George had sex all night long, and she's like, "Oh, George," and he's like, "What do you want now?" And he's backing away. Yeah. <laughs> It's very Al yeah. Bundy esque, you know. <laughs> it is. It is. Working with Bob was the best. I mean, he is truly like a second father to me. Uh -huh. um, just so many great memories. He just had us all laughing all the time. Just such a joy to be around him. He was the life of the party. Oh yeah, I mean he'd be on the Tonight Show with Johnny telling those hilarious stories, and he's all deadpan the entire time. <laughs> yeah, he just was really talented. Yeah, he's he's a very funny guy. Um, my favorite Heather episodes. I love the one where she falls in love with the guy who wants to be a priest. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> that it, was actually a lot of fun, and um, that was a really good episode. I think it was really well written. The actor was great. Everything about it was great. Yeah, and uh, Helen Ellen Crawford from ER plays that uh, nun at the uh, the religious bed and breakfast you you, you two go to, yes. and she told me yes. she got, she got a lot of laughs when she came in there with the basket full of chocolates and did that wink and said, "Have fun." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great show. It's a great episode. It's really well written. Or how about the one where Heather likes that guy who takes ballet lessons and she thinks he's gay? Oh yeah. That episode was really awkward for me and really strange because I remember during rehearsals, they had a choreographer come in to like kind of choreograph a dance where I'm like trying to come on to this guy, mm -hmm. but yet like standards and practices were like, uh, like you need to tone that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of just a weird like it was just a weird episode like I would not say that was one of my favorites for sure that is definitely not one of my favorite episodes I'm so sorry you had that experience I that's okay no 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 it wasn't a bad experience it was just awkward and weird and I just didn't think it was like funny I guess I don't know it just seemed weird well, it, 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 it's funny because I remember in that episode, um, Heather and Angela paint their toenails on the kitchen table, and I never forgot that. I always thought it was hilarious, and irony of irony, you know, I've been painting my toenails since I was 13, and I've dated women who thought I was gay because I painted my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just say, I mean, I don't think that they could get away with an episode like that today. Well, I, I you know. well, I think I think you know back then um, the the uh, the term bisexual I think was very controversial and debatable. Yes. So they yes. they never said, oh, he must be bi or, or anything like that. But I think nowadays they probably would. You know. They would, and it would be more accepted, and it would be. It was just a weird episode. Just it was like, I don't know, I don't know. It was just a weird episode. Not one of my favorites. I'll just leave it at that. The episode where, where Kevin and Mr. Belvedere get an apartment, there's a couple funny moments in there uh, with Heather. Um, uh, I think Wesley um, uh, made a crank call to her saying that there was going to be a costume party, and then you came out as Car Carmen Miranda. <laughs> yes, I totally remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. We had such a great wardrobe guy on Belvedere. His name was Bill Ballou, and he was actually Elvis Presley's personal wardrobe person uh -huh. when Elvis Presley was in his heyday. And Bill Ballou, our wardrobe guy, drove a baby Mercedes that was gifted to him from Priscilla and Elvis. And it was this beautiful baby white Mercedes that was gifted to him on Christmas Day. And I remember when he told us the story. It was really cool. But he was great. He was and fantastic. 
and then there's a part where uh, where um, Heather and Wesley are are playing cards, and Heather wins, and and he says, "Now you got to take off your shirt." <laughs> yeah, that's so oh creepy. Oh my god, that's funny. It is creepy. <laughs> that is creepy. Yeah, a little cringy. Why, uh, you know, uh, Robert Goulet came on um, Mr. Belvedere twice. H- how did that come to be? Was he friends with somebody there? You know, I'm not really sure. I was so young, and I don't know, like, what the relation was there, but he was really nice. So was his wife. Um, everyone loved when he came and guested on the show. So, and he, whenever he came on, he was always singing. And Eileen, who was a singer, would always end up singing, too, because they like to utilize the fact that she was a great singer. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, he was a really nice guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's see, I've talked to Melanie Chardoff, who guest starred on there once. Uh, Lee Merriweather was on there. She played George's Old Flame from high school. Uh, Kay yep. Lenz, uh, Winnie Friedman, who I adore. I've talked to her. I love Winnie. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. And, and even Fergie was on there when she was Stacy Ferguson. Yep. Yep, I remember that episode. I remember that episode very well. Have you ever met Leon Redbone? No. Mm-mm. That that theme song is so memorable and quirky. I mean, my dad still sings it to this day. He remembers it so well. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Dur- during that run uh, that you were on there, you got to be on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. <laughs> I should have never done that. That was really intimidating and really scary. And, um, yep. I was on there with Jay Leno. I had to audition to get to actually be on the Tonight Show. Uh-huh. You had to meet with the producer. I don't remember his name, but I remember I had to go in there and talk to him and just shoot the shit, basically. Mm-hmm. And he thought I was great, and he put me in the Monday night time slot because Jay Leno only did it on Monday nights. And I just remember, I just remember feeling so intimidated and scared. The other guest stars were Nell Carter. Uh huh. And John Lithgow. Wow. And I just remember thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really no pressure there. <laughs> yeah, no pressure there. I remember in, when I did my makeup in the makeup room, I was sitting next to Nell Carter, and the uh, makeup person was saying to me, she was overhearing our conversation, and she looked at me, and she said something to me about how I'm too nice of a person, and I'm never going to make it in Hollywood being as nice as I am. Oh, God. Yeah, something like that. And I knew she was difficult to work with. Oh, like, yeah. We were probably polar opposite. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, That's God, crazy. I hate hearing <laughs> stories like that because, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a case of don't meet your idols kind of a thing. Yeah, I was a huge fan of Nell Carter. Um, I loved her in Ain't Misbehaving. My sister and I had the soundtrack to it. We would listen to it all the time. I was a huge fan of Give Me a Break. Yeah. Um, and it was a true honor to meet her, but she was not the nicest person to me. But, you know, maybe she was having a, a bad day. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> in, in 1988, you were in the after school special No Means No. How was doing that uh, a TV movie? <laughs> That was great. I got to work with uh, Chad Lowe and Lori Laughlin and Dana Barron. Yeah. And the director and writer, Jeff Auerbach, was fantastic. We're still friends today. Um, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed working on that. And it was nice because I did it on a hiatus from Belvedere. And, you know, it's always fun getting to do something different and meet new people and being in a different environment, different set, different crew people. It was it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed working on that. Yeah, I've, I've talked to Dana. She's interesting. Uh huh. <laughs> I remember when you were on uh, Growing Pains. How did that come about? Um. To be honest with you, I don't remember exactly how it came about, but I want to say i had said something to someone about how i would love to be on an episode of growing pains i was a huge fan of the show i was friends with tracy gold i was friends with kirk um you know i would see them at events and i just remember expressing interest in being in an episode i don't remember exactly how it came to be but being on their set was very reminiscent of being on the belvedere set they're a really close group and it was a lot of fun work on that episode a lot of fun 
Jeremy Miller is great. Oh, it's funny you mentioned that you were friends with Tracy Gold. I used to get your two names mixed up all the time. <laughs> People did a lot. People would think that I was her, and um, I didn't realize this till recently, but like we were at dinner with our husbands, Tracy and her husband and my husband and myself. Mm -hmm. We went to dinner not that long ago, maybe two years ago, uh -huh. and I went to the restroom, and I came back, and my husband, Frank, is like, I didn't know Tracy auditioned for Heather Owens. I'm like, I looked at her. I'm like, you did? Yeah. She goes, yeah. I remember seeing you there. Like, we auditioned for the same role. I'm like, oh, wow. I didn't realize that. I go, you got the better deal. Because Groin Pains always did way better in the ratings than Belvedere did. So she ended up not getting Belvedere because she got Groin Pains. So. Yeah, back then, you know, I mean, without the internet, it was such a smaller world, and, like, everybody knew each other, and, like, actors were always at auditions, and, you know, uh, seeing each other and stuff, and then, if they didn't yeah. get one thing, they would get, you know, something else, you know, similar to that. Yeah, we were, I felt like I was always up against the same people, you'd always see the same people mm -hmm. at auditions and stuff, same moms, same people, yeah, it's a much smaller world. <laughs> and, there, and in that episode, it was very self-referential because uh, uh, I think it's Kirk Cameron who says, uh, she looks just like the girl on Mr. Belvedere. Yeah, I thought that was a great line. <laughs> then, yeah. you, then you get attacked by dogs in After Midnight. Yes, the <laughs> script supervisor on Belvedere, her husband, wrote and directed that movie. And he had asked me if I would play a part in that movie. And we shot all nights for weeks. That was a little hard to get used to. Um, but, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Again, something different on my hiatus, something that wasn't comedy. And um, I remember all the actresses that were in my scenes were great, like Judy Aronson and yeah. great people. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love Judy. I've, ha I've had her on. I'm one of the few people who's gotten her on a podcast. She's just a lovely, lovely person. And she is. Penelope Sudro, oh my God, she has my favorite death in Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Welcome to prime time, bitch, and then gets thrown through the TV. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't watch scary movies, so I miss that. That's but, right, yeah, that's right. I forgot cool. you're not a horror person. <laughs> I am not a horror person. And yet you were in Mirror Mirror 2 Raven Dance. I love that movie. Oh my, I think you're the only person, Tommy, that liked that movie. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. I got to work with Mark Ruffalo, who went on to become a huge, famous star. But yeah, that Mirror Mirror 2. Yep. Yeah, so yep. like you, know, you got to work with some more legends, Roddy McDowell, Sally Kellerman, Sarah Douglas, Veronica Cartwright. Oh, that must have been intimidating. Yeah, it was intimidating. For that audition, they had me read against uh, Sally Kellerman. But they didn't have us read a script. They had us improvise. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a lot of experience in that. So I just kind of rolled with it and just put myself in the moment and was really listening to what she was saying. And um, she actually ended up making me cry. So mm -hmm. I was like crying in my audition at this imp in this improv. And I ended up getting the part. And um, on set of that movie is when I met my first husband. And his name was Aaron. And uh, we got married and had two kids. Oh. He's, he's no longer alive. Um, so we're no longer married. But that's how I met my first husband. He was the cameraman on that movie. Oh. Yeah, it's funny. You never you, you never know who you're going to meet, you know, when, when, when you go anywhere in life. You really, yeah. You may you may meet your mate. You you never know. Exactly. When you worked with Mark Ruffalo on this, did you see a spark in him that uh, maybe you know he could be a star one day? Definitely, absolutely. Uh -huh. He was so talented. He was great. I'm sure he thought I was a little weird because we had to do like this on screen kiss, and I remember saying to him, "I don't mean to sound weird, but can we like have our first kiss like?" in our dressing room or something like I didn't want our first kiss to be on camera. I just didn't want to do that. Cause I felt like, I don't know. I just wasn't sure how that was going to go. And he was like, sure. No problem. He was really great. He was really caring, giving actor and super nice. And he was totally in character. And 
I mean, gosh, he just went on to do great things. Yeah, and he was young, too. He was probably just fresh out of high school when he did that. Yeah, he was really young. Yeah. Yep. And you had that cute little cat, I remember. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I forgot about that. Yes, there was a cat. Yes. <laughs> and, you yeah. got to, and you got to do some dancing in it, too. Yep. Got to do some dancing. Got to work with a great choreographer. Um, yeah. It was a good experience. It was just, it was just sort of a, you know cheesy horror movie the first one uh, is a masterpiece i i i, t I tell uh everyone if you're gonna, if you're gonna get into the mirror mirror movie start with the the first one it's great oh that's cool i never saw the first one i probably should it is it's really great it's it's just you know supernatural just like um the sequels and yeah. um, throughout most of the movie you're laying down because uh, you hurt your leg yes so yep. that, that had to have been nice <laughs> to be laying down most of the movie. Laying down, and it was my first time having to have tar real tarantulas crawling all over my arm. Everyone on set was very um, disturbed and freaked out by it. And yet, like, I was the one that had to lay there and have these tarantulas crawl all over my arm. It was ridiculous. I could not wait for that scene to be over. That was a little weird. A little awkward. Yeah. And then a uh, drag strip girl. I never saw this. Uh, this is one of the mm -hmm. last things you did. Yep. Yep. I worked with uh, Natasha Gregson Wagner. Natalie Wood's daughter. Who was daughter. really sweet. Yeah. Yep. Natalie Wood's daughter. She was super sweet. I played her best friend. Um, yeah, that was a really fun role to play. Uh, we filmed all over L.A., and yeah, I don't, I don't remember auditioning for that. I don't remember the audition on that, but it was a lot of fun working on that. And uh, Tracy Lords was in it. Tracy Lords was in it. Coincidentally, Tracy Lords came up to me on set one day, and she goes, "Do you know who I am? Do you remember me?" And I'm like, "Well, I know who you are, but <laughs> like, how would I remember you?" She goes, "We were in preschool together." I'm wow. like, we were? She goes, yeah, we were in preschool together. She goes, I totally remember you. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so funny. So, yeah, she was sweet, super sweet. Wow, what are the odds? <laughs> right? Yeah, it was kind of funny. I, I thought she was mistaken, but, I mean, she told me the teacher, the school. I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And Mary Lambert directed <laughs> it. She's a very talented lady. She did all of Madonna's classic videos. Yep, Mary Lambert. She was super nice, uh, very easy to work with. Uh, yeah, it was a really good experience. Like I said, I really haven't had any, thankfully, I haven't had any bad experiences, you know. Yeah. The search, I um, I don't know what this is because IMDb hasn't put a lot of info in it, but it was directed by Corey Allen, the, the bad guy in uh, Rebel Without a Cause. Yep, Corey Allen he was great. Um, it's kind of like a Christian film. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I My agent sent me out on the audition and I got it. So I was like, all right, let's see what happens. And I auditioned and got the part. He was really nice to work with. Um, we filmed all over Hollywood Boulevard in the middle of the night. Got to see some really interesting people. Um, but yeah, that was a really good experience. It was a, it was a good movie, something that I'm proud of. Yeah, for sure. And my 100th guest was in it, Vivica Davis. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. What, what would she like to work with? She was great. Like I said, I don't really, I mean, besides the Nell Carter exchange, uh -huh. <laughs> I've been really lucky. Yeah. Really lucky. Yeah, no, she was great to work with. So, so after you left acting, you were um, cooking in restaurants for a little while? Yep, I worked, went to culinary school, I worked in restaurants for a while, and then when I got pregnant with my um, first child, my daughter Sarah, I had a really hard time being around the food, it made me nauseous, mm -hmm. so I stepped back from working in um, the cooking industry, and then I got pregnant with my second child, my son McKellen, and I never went back to cooking. Um I raised my two kids. My husband had passed away when my our second child was almost two years old. And then I was a single mom 
for a really long time. And then when my kids uh, got into school full time, um, I decided I was going to go into real estate. I got my real estate license and I have been selling real estate for almost 18 years now. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I know so many actresses that have gotten into real estate. It's 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 so crazy, especially in L.A. And they told me during COVID it was tough, but like once the fall of 2021 came, it got a little easier. Did you go through a, a drive spell around that time? Actually, 2020 was probably one of my best years. <laughs> um, I actually, um, I hustle. I'm a really hard worker, and I... It's all about lead generation and talking to as many people as you can mm -hmm. and helping people buy or sell. So, no, 2020 was probably one of my best years. Um, our team does really well. My partner is my husband, Frank. He also runs the Keller Williams office um, on the west side. He's the team leader there. And uh, we sell anywhere from 25 to 30 houses a year. My goal this year is to sell 40 houses this year. So we work really hard, and re I really enjoy it. I really enjoy getting to know people and building relationships and helping people, you know, purchase a house. And, and it's not easy in L.A. Everything's really expensive. Yeah. Uh, do you do mostly uh, San Fernando Valley? Um, I do Santa Clarita Valley. I do Kern County, San Fernando Valley, and on the west side. So I do most of Southern California. But this year I actually sold two houses in Spain. Believe it or not, I had a client that wanted to buy a house in Spain, and I found an agent out there that I built a relationship with and referred them my client. So I got paid a referral, so sold two houses mm. in Spain. Um, mm. I mean, I try to find if my clients are moving out of California, which there actually has been a lot of that in the last few years, um, I usually find them their agent for the area that they're going to and help facilitate that. Nice. And do you have, like, old ancient houses that have been around since the beginning of Hollywood? I mean, I've sold houses that were built in, like, 1920. So, I mean, in L.A., there's a lot of older homes. A lot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, we, not a few years ago, sold a commercial building in L.A. That was around from, like, 1910. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely been experiences with old properties, historic properties, stuff like that. But then I also sell new construction, too. So it's kind of like across the gamut, everything you can think of. Yeah. <laughs> Is it called Tofty Realty? Um, it's Tofty Bernardo Real Estate. Okay. But if you just uh, search Tracy Tofty, um, all of our stuff comes up. And on Instagram, it's under at Freckled Realtor. Nice, nice. So what, what do you like to cook as a hobby? Oh my gosh. Well, I make dinner for my husband and I almost every night, but we eat pretty healthy. Um, you know, I really enjoy when it's Thanksgiving and Christmas and I'm making a meal for everybody. I also love to bake. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just like making people happy, cooking things that my kids are going to enjoy when my adult kids come home to visit. You know, that's always really special. Yeah, I, I come from a half Italian family. My mom's side is Italian and there's some really good oh, cooking nice. there. <laughs> I bet. I bet. That's like one of our favorite foods is Italian food. We love Italian food. I wouldn't say I'm a great cook at Italian food, but I, I do my best. Yeah. <clears throat> do you do any Jewish food? Um, sometimes, yeah, we do. In fact, uh, last year, my husband and I had a potato latke off where uh. we tried to beat each other with our potato latkes. Um, I grew up Jewish, but I don't practice it. Right. I mean, we celebrate Christmas, we do all of that, but I definitely love, I just took my dad to a delicatessen yesterday when I went to visit him, and uh, yeah, no, we love all of that, matzo ball soup, potato latkes, all that fun stuff. That is so awesome. You excited for Christmas this year? I am excited for Christmas. Everyone in our family is healthy, happy, doing well, doing well in their jobs, and career paths and you know i'm just super grateful for my health and my husband's health and all of us doing really well so yeah absolutely i love spending time with my family yeah 
I mean, as I get older, it's not as fun anymore because, you know, I'm 40, I don't have any kids, and I just, I'm just grateful for what I have, you know. <laughs> at, at the end of the yeah. day, that's all I need, you know. Yeah, I think as you get older, you start to uh, <clears throat> simplify your life a little bit and realize what's really important. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. real quick, we got to play my secret silly game. This is... A series of okay. silly slumber party questions. There's no win or lose. It's just pure fun. And how the, okay. ga- how the game works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me that exact same question and I answer it. And feel free to comment on the answers because they might be funny. Okay, you got it. Tracy, are you ticklish? Yes. Tommy, are you ticklish? Yes, and if you tickle me without warning, though, I might hit you in the groin. <laughs> I get really mad when my husband tickles me. I hate it. I hate it. I do not like to be tickled. Don't even like just thinking about it makes me want to hit someone. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind it. Just let me know beforehand, you know, because I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, is your belly button an innie or an Audi? It's an innie. Is your belly button an innie or an Audi? Yes, it is. It's a very deep innie. <laughs> Good what, to know. What color are your toenails painted? Oh, gosh, let me look. Oh, my toenails are painted light pink, kind of like a like a candy pink. What what color are your toes painted? Right now they're not painted, but last time they were, they were lavender purple. Nice. Love that color. I might do uh, red, green, and white for Christmas. You should, totally should. Yes, and if I do, I will definitely post a picture of it on social media. Please do. Yes. What would you say is your best personality trait? I would say my best personality trait is I'm very uh, caring and empathetic. What is your best personality trait? I, I can see that in you. I am empathetic as well, and I also have no filter, and I see that in you as well. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of say what's on my mind. Although I feel like I've gotten better at putting on a filter, though. As I've gotten older, I feel like I've been, I'm better at that. But yes. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I, I used to swear a lot more, especially on the podcast. If you go listen to my interview with Michelle from five years ago, I say fuck so many times in that interview. Oh, my God. It's stuff, and she said it as well. But um, yeah, I've I've gotten to the point now where just you know I, I bring out the the f bombs and and so forth. If I'm I'm really frustrated or I'm trying to make a point, you know what I mean? Yeah, yep, I do. I got it. Um, if you could have anything named after you, what would it be? <laughs> oh God, I'm not going to ask that question. Maybe like a menu item at a restaurant. Oh yeah. Yeah, what about you? What would you want named after you? A vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you win. You win. I would call I it the Tom- I would call it the Tommy Chatsy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Yes, when my dogs uh throw up. When my dogs throw up dog food, yes. Awful. Makes me gag. Awful. Totally awful. What about you? Either farts or feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. It, yeah. The feet got to be clean at all times. Yeah. 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 I agree. Tracy, I can't tell you what an honor this has been. After we're done here, I'm going to go cry because dreams really do come true. And I hope you have just uh, the most amazing holiday season with your family. And be safe Thank out you. there. Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate it. And to you as well. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Tracy Wells Tofty, ain't she a sweetheart? Oh my God, what a sweet, sweet lady. I'm so glad that we could have that talk today. I mean, oh, I just, I I like her a lot. No filter, brutally honest, and sweet, all in one. I think that is so freaking awesome. Thank you, God, thank you, my lucky stars, for this interview today. 
I hope you all enjoy it on Christmas Eve. And go check out her website at Tofty Bernardo Real Estate. It's not Tofty Realty, it's Tofty Bernardo Real Estate. Go take a look at the beautiful houses she sells. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, There's no shame in living in the past, because the present sucks. Later, dudes!